Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic audio and video related products. Now a few months ago, I done a video as to why I believe the Fujifilm X-T50 could be the best compact camera, the best mirrorless camera you could buy in 2024, and we have it here. Um, now I just want to follow up on that video, because I still believe that, I still think it's a fantastic camera, and it is my favorite camera to take out, simply because of its sheer compact size. Now, I've got fitted to it the Sigma 10 to 18, which is a wonderful lens. I used this lens uh, when we recently went to the circus, so I'll show you some sample images here. Um, now these sample images will be up on my Flickr page. I would strongly suggest that you take a look at them on Flickr rather than taking a look at them here. Uh, I'm only going to flick through them, so take a look at them on Flickr if you really do want to see how good the Fujifilm X-T50 is. Now, it's a mirrorless camera. It's got its three-inch articulating screen, the same as what uh, uh, you know many cameras have. I say articulated, it's a tilty wilty screen. It doesn't articulate to the side. It only goes up and down. Um, now, I, that's one of the reasons I love this camera, because it's great for photog photography. When I'm going out taking photographs, I find it not so discreet having an articulating screen that goes out to the side. I find this is far more discreet if it just tilts up and down. So I can take high level shots or I can take, you know, take me low level shots. I think that is beautiful. I really do like that. It has got the 40 megapixel sensor in that the Fuji X-T5 has and the X-H2. Um, I'm filming the wide shot on my Fuji X-H2 over there. Um, that's, uh, but that's a much bigger camera. This is much more compact. It's just taken out and about, you know, on a daily basis. Um, it has only got the one SD card slot. But there's a few things that uh, I find annoying about it not really frustrating it's not really a deal breaker but just a little bit annoying certainly that i discovered when i was out taking photographs at the circus and i'm going to show you well i'm going to explain what those uh, couple of things are now firstly the first annoyance i find with it after using it for a long period of time is how they've placed the sd card slot or where they've placed it now it's in the battery compartment that's fairly typical that's common my x8 my xs20 has the SD card in the battery slot, but this one, they've pushed it right, they've recessed it right the way in, so it's really difficult to get out. In fact, it's very, very difficult to get out with a battery, and there we go, um, got it out there. And when you're out and about, and you want to change the SD card, it's a bit fiddly doing it on site, because you kind of have to take the battery out first, and then take the card out. So. I think that's a bad design. I don't mind it being in with a battery compartment, but make it easier for it to come out. Now, they can't change that in firmware. It is what it is. You've got what you've got, you know. Um, and so it's all, also awkward getting it back in. So that's my first annoyance. Now, that isn't a major annoyance at all because I'm not taking the SD card in and out all the time. Predominantly, obviously, when I'm taking it out, is to load the images onto the computer. So it's not a real annoyance, but it is an annoyance. And the other thing that I found was the burst shooting. Now it has got burst mode on here, and I used that for when I was taking photographs at the circus. You can see a few samples here that I took at the circus. Um, oh, they're beautiful images. Uh, but this sensor does reproduce lovely images if you're using good glass on the front of it. Now, all these shots were taken with the uh, Sigma 10 to 18. Um, so I was getting wide shots, and also on my Fuji XS20, I had the 18 to 50 lens on. I've done another video actually where I say they, these could two these two lenses could be the only lenses you ever need, whether it be for the Sony E mount, the Fuji X mount, or for now the Canon RFS mount. Um, I say RFS because it's for the APS-C mount. Uh, so it's um, brilliant lenses from 10 to 50 basically across you know both lenses and that covered me beautifully for this circus it was fantastic so um yeah I mean, it's a really really nice lens to complement the xt50 now because of its 40 megapixel sensor i think it's because of its 40 megapixel sensor the burst burst rate really does slow down if you're shooting jpeg and raw and i discovered that here um and it takes quite a long time for it to read those images onto the sd card so you can't take photographs why it's you know why it's transferring the images over to the SD card? So I find the burst shooting is quite sluggish. Uh, but if, I'm sure if you're shooting JPEG only, it would be fine. But I was shooting JPEG and RAW, so that slowed the process down 
quite considerably. Um, so that would be the only other thing I've noticed with this camera is its burst rate, rate is uh, quite annoying when you're on location. I mean, you're having to wait for those images to be transferred to the card before you can carry on taking photographs. I found that a little bit annoying. Um, I also thought I would find the 40 megapixel sensor a bit too much for a computer to handle, but it isn't. It's, it works fine. I have no problems at all. Um, I know I've got a MacBook Pro, one of the newer M2 MacBook Pros, but um, even so, I found that that 40 megapixel sensor works fine and it's great for cropping the image. So if you do want to crop the images, you've got the megapixel count there to be able to, you know, crop the images if you uh, so desire to do so. Um, the other thing I love about this camera is the auto switch. Uh, now, again, when I'm taking it, going out and about just taking ordinary photographs, I don't want to mess around with setting the shutter speed and the aperture. I just flick that to auto and then it, the camera will select the correct shutter speed and the correct aperture, correct ISO. Uh, you can still move all the focus points. It doesn't affect that at all. So that's great. And um, I find that very, very handy. Also, I have found this is the only model that in auto, it still shoots raw. I found in the X-T30 and the other models that I've had, uh, when you put it in auto, it only shoots JPEG. I'm really pleased Fuji uh, obviously listened to their customers and actually made it uh, enable it to shoot raw uh, and uh, JPEG. I think that is great. So yeah, very, very nice little compact camera. Uh, great for going out and about with. Um, and I said, it's value for money, I think is really good. Um, I, I think it's, as I've said in another video, I think it's better value for money buying this than it would be the Fujifilm X106. That's got a fixed lens on, um, that's about £1,600, when well, it's not about, it is £1,600, if you can get it, um, they sell more for, on the second-hand market than they do new, because uh, you can't get them. This represents much better value for money, because it has got the same 40 megapixel sensor, it's got effectively the same innards, the same processor, but you can change the lenses, and it still looks gorgeous. It's a really, really gorgeous looking camera, so... Um, yeah, I can still highly recommend highly recommend it after using it for several months now, using it regularly as well. Um, I can still highly recommend it. And I say with this 10 to 18 lens, works a treat. I mean, you can buy, you know, nice cheap lenses for it. This little Artisan, uh, TT Artisan lens is really cheap. Uh, it's a 27mm lens and it's gorgeous. The results from it are really good and it works really well on the 40 megapixel sensor as well. So... Yeah, I mean, if you do, uh, you know, want to get the X-T50, then I would say go ahead and get it. You're not going to be disappointed with any, any images you get from it. And if you take a look at some of these images, you know, particularly if you look at them on my Flickr page, very challenging lighting conditions, uh, but you still get lovely sharpness um, and lovely detail with these images. So, um, you know, with this camera. So, yeah, uh, I, the um, ISO works really well. You know, uh, so it will work in quite, you know, low lighting conditions without getting noisy images. So all in all, it's a really, really, you know, really, really nice camera. It's got your dual command dials on the cameras. You've got one on the back, one on the front. But most uh, Fuji lenses have an aperture ring around the lens. Uh, this lens doesn't. Uh, the Sigma lenses don't. So you, um, it's great that it has got the dual command dials because you've got them on the camera body. Um, and you've got your shutter speed control dial on the top. It's got an automatic setting. Uh, you've got exposure compensation dial on the top there. So um, everything's where you would want it to be. Um, and your film simulation mode there. Now, I don't use that. I do feel that is a waste of a, a command dial, really. Um, it would be nice if Fuji, at some point in the future, can do a firmware update where you can set that to be something else rather than just film simulations. Um, so they only work in JPEG. The film simulations don't affect raw images. They only affect your JPEG images. Interesting dial to have that on there. I mean, that's great for your novice or for your... Um, I mean, there's a lot of street photographers that only shoot, shoot JPEG. So I can see how useful that would be for them. But it's not useful for me. That whole side is kind of non-redundant to me. Um, it's got a nice viewfinder. It's not you know, um, a really high-res viewfinder, but it's fine for what I need. Uh, it's not as high-res as my X-H2 over there, but that's a pro camera. 
that's got your two card slots um it's got a bigger grip it's a bigger camera but uh yeah very nice and compact it's lovely i did actually put a grip on it but i've taken it off because i prefer it without the grip to be honest i mean it's, it's much more comfortable without the grip um but i have put a, a shutter a screwed in the little shutter release button um on the top there just to make that a bit bigger and i think the red just adds a bit of um sexiness to it so there we go yeah that's a fujifilm xt50 a couple of months after having it and i still um stick to my uh you know um, beliefs that it is one of the best mirrorless cameras and it's the best compact mirrorless camera i think you can get if you want one for discreetness and for doing street photography and so don't forget to take a look at these images on Flickr. Uh, so you can see how good they are and how good this camera is. So there we go. Thanks very much. I hope you found that video useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Hit the like button if you like the content of my videos or you like the content of this video. That would be fantastic. Thanks very much. Cheers for now. Bye.